Hi, welcome to MBX Magic Number Two with me, Trevor Conkergood from Sunset Stitches. So MBX Magic Number Two is the second video in a series that I'm recording that I call MBX Magic, and the purpose of that series of videos is, I guess, to inspire people to use their digitizer MBX software and also to help introduce the software to new people that are um, don't already have it. So I'm going to talk about new tools and features in each of the recordings in this series. So in number two, specifically, I'm going to be talking about applique. And I'm also going to create a special motive set for a patchwork applique font so that will be of great interest to anybody who's got the Digitizer MBX program. So yeah, so basically you can watch this video on the internet, but you'll also want to visit your local Genomi dealer and collect a copy of the recording because the recording is going to also come with the embroidery designs that I create today and the motive set of the patchwork applique font. So yeah, I have lots of things to show you. I'm going to start by, I guess, explaining what applique is, show some photographs of appliques that I've made during my uh, weekly classes that I hold. And so um, I think at the end you'll be you know, surprised just how easy it is to create your own applique embroidery. So with all of that said, I'll get started and I'm just going to quickly take a look at a couple photographs. So these are designs that I created during my different, I guess, um, classes about using the Genomi Digitizer software. So this is a design that's an applique and you can tell it's applique, it's got some funky sort of pink fabric in the background and then I've applique some white fabric on top and you can see it's got kind of a handmade blanket looking edge to it and yeah that's in general what applique is so it's called the applique I love you heart and this is from my class getting started number two and actually getting started is a great series for anybody that does purchase the software uh, first of all it comes with a DVD in the box that I recorded that has tools I guess videos on how to use all of the tools in the program and after that, I guess my Getting Started series I recommend is a great place to start. There's six classes that um, are going to take you from I'm brand new with my software to I'm happily using it and love it and fully able to keep up with Trevor and any of his other classes. Um, yeah, so these are other designs. The Applique Rose design from Getting Started number three. This is an interesting one uh, from Digitizer Workshop number 17 where I was teaching a technique called cut thread and we actually cut the top thread of the applique to make it look kind of fringy or velvety like this. Um, there's another applique rose, a white rose from Digitizer Workshop number 16 and here's some quilted applique flowers from number 15 and notice here I've used um, a motive edge, a decorative type of finished edge for the applique so I show in my classes how to do all sorts of things here we're using echo uh, quilting and stippling around an applique flower and um, this was a design I made during digitizer workshop number 15 a patchwork applique heart and see how there's different layers of applique fabric that were all laid together and stitched with motive edges and satin cover stitches so yeah that's what an applique is and that's a few photographs of it. And what I'll do now is I'm just going to pop over to my Digitizer MBX software. And I'm going to, I won't bore you with an orientation of the program. I just specifically want to show you right here I have a tool called my applique tool. And if I click on that, and then I'll use my mouse to place some points. And if I, I guess if I left click with my mouse, you can see here I'm getting corner points. And yet, if I right-click with my mouse, I'll get rounded points. So that's kind of in general how it works. Um, when I hit Enter, the software will close the shape, and it will um, add the embroidery stitches. So that's really how the embroidery software works. You simply draw the shapes. Um, you don't always have to draw them. There's lots of automatic tools to com automatically convert artwork into embroidery. But in this case, I just simply took the applique tool drew this lovely little shape and if I take a close look at the stitching that was created you can see here that it has several parts there's I guess a placement line 
there's a tack down line, and there's a cover stitch. So these are the elements that it takes to make an embroidery. Um, I'm just going to select this object that we I just made. Um, you can see it's selected. It's kind of highlighted. And um, notice here it, it shows up as an applique object in my sequence tab. So there's only one object in our embroidery design. Now, I thought I would show how I can open up the object details and there's a tab for applique. And so there's all sorts of settings that you get to control with an applique. And just to review them, um, the type of cover stitch. Right now it's a satin fill and we could choose to change that to be a blanket edge if we wanted and I'll say OK and then you'll see that it has a completely different style of applique. So that's just an example of the type of changes that you're going to create with your object details. Now there's all sorts of things that we can control, the spacing of the blanket edges, the width, how wide they are. Um, you can offset your, you know, we just drew a single center line and the applique right now is set 100% to the inside of that. But depending on how you're using the tool and what fabric you're using, you sometimes offset these things, especially when you have the satin edge. We quite often will go, like for example, it comes up with 30% of the inside and 70% of the outside. And anyway, they're all things you can adjust. You can adjust the style of applique. Um, this is a pre-cut applique, or you can have a do a trim in place applique. So those are different methods. Um, you can choose to have the fabric shown. So right now it says none, but I'll just choose to pick, I guess, a fabric from the the options that are came with the software. Um, we'll pick fleecy, and we'll change the color to be pink, and say OK. And you can sort of see now it shows that it's an app. I can tell it's an applique object, and it's got to have pink background to it. So in general that's how it works and that's sort of how easy it can be to create your own applique. Now uh, my objective isn't to teach you everything about using it today, more so to inspire, but I do want to show I guess another thing. Um, if I choose the applique tool and draw a second applique um, that goes over top of the first one and so we'll just um, show you I have two applique objects now and Maybe I'll just open up the object details of the second applique and set that to have a different color fabric, just so you can see um, that there's two appliques and they're kind of layered together, together on top. So the blue applique is obviously on top of the pink applique. Now, if I was to select both of those applique objects at the same time, notice on the tool I have an option here called partial applique. I'm just going to use that now and show you what it did, it basically knows that there's two layers of applique and so it removes the stitches for the layer that's underneath the, you know, the layer that's on top. So that kind of avoids the bulk. So I wanted to show you that just so you could see just how smart the software really is. Um, it doesn't actually, I'll just, now that I've put the realistic sort of view on the stitches, you can see what it did. It just trimmed the cover stitch. You still would have had when you did the pink applique, your placement line and your tack down line, but it trimmed out the cover stitch for the applique that was, I guess, in behind. So it's really that smart. Um, yeah, so the next design I was going to show you, and this is one that I'm going to share with you today, is the Janome MBX layout. I created this from a patchwork applique lettering. And so let me explain a little bit about how I made this design. And it really, I think, exemplifies just how powerful the program is. Um, I actually downloaded a font from the internet that was called Patchwork Lettering. And so it was a true type font. And um, if I go to my software here and show you that in the font list, First of all, Digitizer comes with, you know, dozens of different embroidery fonts that are built-in fonts. But then beyond that, it goes to your Windows fonts that you've installed for your Windows. And so within here, there are several interesting sort of decorative ones that I've downloaded and added. Now, I'll just scroll down to find um, the Patchwork applique font and show you that it's... I could use this in any program that I have now within Windows. And so yeah, right here, 
patchwork lettering, I guess is what it was called. And so, yeah, if I was to make a lettering object and put in there just whatever, the letter D and T for Digitalk, which is, of course, the name of my classes that I make, um, it's going to create this not in an applique, but just in, I guess, lettering, embroidery lettering. And so you can see sort of the inspiration for this. So what I did was, there's the, the style of the font. I'll just make it bigger so you can see. It's got um, the look of the applique and the patchwork built into this letter style. And so what I did was, and I'll just show you, I created uh, right here, MBX Magic number to A to Z patchwork. Let's open that up. So here you can see what I actually did was I created an applique design for every letter of the alphabet. So it's the A and the B and the C, and they have this sort of handmade look to them. And so I'm going to share with the MBX Magic download this embroidery design. I actually saved every letter of the alphabet um, as a Jeff file and I make them available in several other embroidery formats so if you don't have a Jeromey machine and you need a different format it'll probably also be in the download. I made several. Um, so I made every design as an embroidery design and that's one of the things that um, you know you see people doing but what I wanted to show also was I took these letters and I created them as a motive set. And so now if I just go back to my uh, blank design that we were working on here, I'm just going to show you how this is my embroidery gallery tool up here. And I'm just going to turn that on. And it comes up, I guess, with the default motive set. These are, you know, motives that came with the program and there's dozens of different, you know, patterns. But you can create your own and that's what I did. And so if I look here, I'll change the motive set to be patchwork A to Z. And notice now there are all the letters from A to Z. And so if I wanted to create a patchwork embroidery, I'll just select it and see what happens. The letter D has become attached to my mouse and I can click once to place it on my screen and then it's kind of like, where would you want to rotate that to what angle? And when I click it the second time, that's it. It's on my screen, and it actually brought with it all of the, I guess, properties of an applique. So it's going to have a run stitch placement line, and then a second run stitch for the um, trim way line, and then, of course, finishing off with this um, little kind of handmade looking cover stitch. So that's how I was able to create the layout. Now, the... Um, the design I made looks like this. It's the Janome MBX patchwork, and this is the, the final stitch out for it. So I guess with the download for today's class, you'll be able to get the, this design that I've exactly made. But more importantly, I'll save for you all the different letters of the patchwork font for you to use. Um, with your embroidery machine and or your embroidery software. And if you have Janome MBX software, I even made and s included the motive set. Remember, I had the motive set that I could just use by selecting it here, the patchwork A to Z. So I'll include the patchwork A to Z motive set. And now, how do I do that? I'm going to include a special file that's called a D2F file in the download. And if you have the Janome Digitizer software, what you would do, I'll just quickly show you. Um, this is the font that I'm including, but it's this file I want, this picture that I wanted to show you right now. So yeah, if you have MBX software and you download my zip file for today's video, then you want to find that D2F file and you specifically want to save it into this folder on your computer. So you'll find under your hard drive, you've got a folder for Janome, and your folder has a subfolder for Digitizer MBX. And underneath there, there's a folder called User Let W. And place that D2F file in there. And then the next time you open Digitizer MBX software, you'll be able to go to your embroidery gallery and drop down your list. And now you'll find that there'll be you'll have black work, you'll have embroidery gallery. Um, all of these other ones are ones that I've made in you know previous my classes. But this one right here will be now included patchwork A to Z with all the letters for you to select. Now, you can resize them once you 
um, you know, put them onto your screen if you want to make some, see how I made some smaller and some bigger. So that's easy to do. Uh, but in general, I guess that's what I wanted to show you was just how easy it is to create an applique embroidery design using Genomi Digitizer software. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it wasn't too long. Um, certainly, if you want to learn more about me and my classes, then visit Digitizer Workshop, uh, sorry, visit sunsetstitches.com. That's my website. Um, but what I really think you need to do is visit your local Genomi dealer and ask them to get you a copy of the video and the download for MBX Magic number two and collect the whole series. They'll have access to it. If your dealer doesn't know about it, just ask them to get in touch with me and I will be able to provide them with the videos for Digitizer MBX Magic. So, hope you enjoyed today's video and thanks for watching. Bye bye.